So now we're going to change this front seal here. Uh, it wasn't leaking, but seeing we're here, we might as well change it. Uh, we need to flick off that cover. We'll use our world famous dismantling tool available in the shop. Uh, hammer. You invariably destroy these taking them off. Don't think you're going to use them again. There we go. Now, there are various different types of seals on here and I hope it's the one... Yeah, it's got a circlip in it. A bit of brake cleaner. There are some seals that's put in from the inside, the early ones. They were a nightmare. Give a bit of a clean up there. Oh, we're dying up back in there. Now we want a small internal circuit. I wonder if this is going to do it. Right, with my newly adjusted circlip pliers, I hope I can get into this and get this circlip out. Ah, yes, there she is. Now, using the same method, we shall try and drill that out. Just be very, very careful when, when drilling that out because it doesn't go very deep. And so the action of screwing your screw in will force the seal out. I know you can't really see much, but believe me, it might be working, might I say. There we go. There's the seal out. See what I mean? By screwing it through, you'll jack the seal out. Now the uh, spring clip has come off. Naturally, throw that away, we don't need that. Bring that up. Oh. <coughs> now all this, all the gear, all the steering boxes I've done for a long, long time uh, when you buy a kit, it hasn't been the right seal in the kit, it's been a bit too small, so the seal, I think, is this one. Indeed it is, because there's two different types of seal. Now, just let me go and look for one. So here we go. Two types of seal. This one fits into this gearbox with the metal cover on, but this one fits on the boxes without a cover on. You can see they're completely different. Can you see that? This is a small shaft and this is a large shaft. See, this one won't even go on. It won't even go on this shaft. So just be careful of that. Just be careful of that. Because the thing is, if you've got a later box, they give the number of this one for this seal. Uh, it's a very tricky one to do. I'll, I'll read it out what size it is. It's 20, 32, 7. That sits in millimetres. 
So that's the seal you need. And there goes the phone. Back in the tick. Yeah, so I've just got a plastic pipe fitting. Ground it down a bit. And this should... Oh, look at that, snug as a bug. There we go. Don't be afraid to grind up bits and pieces. That's going into my box of bits. Useful tools. Oh, it's funny, I was chatting to JP a couple of weeks ago. You know, because I have some stupid jobs and things like that. And he said, why, why don't you buy yourself a lathe, Mike? And I said, but I need to get all the tools. And I says, not only that. I said, the last time I touched a lathe was when I was 16. And I says, you've got like 40 years of experience. So, <laughs> so uh, you know, it's all right, you can have a lathe. But if you don't know how to use it properly, then... Like I said, JP can whistle somewhere up in next to no time. Where for me it would take all day. Time's money. Right, so let's get that in there. Let's use our tool o -matic again. Set the circlip. So now that the circlip's in place, we're going to now put it back on the tester, run it up to pressure, and uh, see if it leaks. So now we're on the test bench. Uh, I haven't got much room to show you, but uh, it does work. Uh, anyway, here we go. It feels really, really good. That's 1,200 pounds of pressure. If it was going to leak, it would squirt a jet all over the place. It's good. Enough of that noise. So that's good. Uh, I'll drain it with oil. Uh, this is a good little test setup. But boy, does it get through some ATF. Because, like, it, the system itself, I don't know if you can probably see down here. Yeah. I've got a sink under that red grill there, so I can put a steering box on it open it up and drain it out into the container but I think I might want to get a suitable amount of uh, oil I'll dig out the centrifuge and put it through the centrifuge and use that oil for testing again in the filter in the in the, I was going to say in the filter in the housing up here there is actually a paper filter so uh, we're not putting dirty fuel uh, fluid back in but anyway I think that's good Let's get it painted and we'll come back and show you the finished article. So here's the finished steering box. Um, looks nice. It didn't leak. Tested it. I've got the dust shield on here. That's just push on. And that one there is another dust shield. Yeah, that's just a tap on. That comes in the kit. Um, nothing to report really. It's set up nice. There's no need to adjust it or anything. It was it felt really, really nice. No backlash or anything. Now, I haven't tightened up the, the nut here. I put a new tab washer on, but the owner's got to tighten that up. And it's best done on the car because you can take this off, drop, take off the drop arm, which is only just loose, uh, fit this, and then tighten it up because it's a bugger to tighten up. And we want to make sure it's on the right way around. There's nothing else to report. It came out really nice. You know, a bit of... Uh, I almost paint things now in this uh, Tremclad semi-gloss because it says uh, it's a primer and a paint together. And so far it's held up really, really well. So there we go. Um, struck lucky with this one. All it needed was a couple of seals. And to be honest, it didn't even need those. Um, yeah, I'm very pleased with that. See ya.